Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chief Marshal Walt Lever, Vice President for University Relations and Chair of the Inauguration Steering Committee. Good morning and thank you so much for being here. This is a very special day of academic tradition and celebration in the history of Lipscomb University. First, I would like to ask if you would please check your phone and be sure your phone is silenced. And we'd like to also ask that you remain seated during the procession. It's now my pleasure to present the academic procession for the inauguration of Dr. Candace McQueen, Lipscomb's 18th president. Will the stage guests and procession participants please be seated. It is my pleasure to introduce your Master of Ceremonies for today, Mitch Edgeworth, Vice Chair of the Lipscomb Board of Trustees and Chair of the Presidential Search Committee, Mitch Edgeworth. I am pleased to welcome you to this wonderful and historic occasion, the inauguration of Lipscomb's 18th president, Dr. Candace McQueen. As we gather today, we do so grateful to our God who blesses us and thankful to the great cloud of witnesses who, as our companions in this work before us, have devoted their lives, their intellect, their resources, and their passion to build, sustain, and promote this institution that we treasure and whose mission to be lights in the world we wholeheartedly embrace. Today, we welcome current and former members of Lipscomb's Board of Trustees and former Lipscomb University presidents and their spouses, whose faithful and strong leadership brings us to this moment. We welcome elected officials community and business leaders and donors who support us as citizens of this state, as members of the Nashville community, and as an institution. We welcome our alumni who continue to serve as a light of this institution. We welcome all those who will be participating in today's program. And we welcome delegates from across the nation, representing schools, institutions of higher education, learned societies, and accrediting agencies. We welcome current and retired faculty, staff, and administrators of Lipscomb University and Lipscomb Academy. And we welcome our students. It is for you that the vision and purpose of this institution has existed for 131 years. Our presence together today represents a show of support for a new administration at Lipscomb University and a common desire for this institution's continued success. Our service begins today with a celebration of our country, our Christian faith, and the history of leadership at Lipscomb University. First, Lipscomb's Sanctuary Choir, under the direction of Dr. Randy Gill, presents Go Light Your World. There is a candle in every soul. There is a candle in every soul. Some brightly burning, some dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire. Seek out the 
As we celebrate our country, the American flag is presented by Marcus Solomon, university student and sergeant in the United States Marine Corps. Our national anthem is presented by the University Choir under the direction of Lynn Hodges. Will you please rise?
Please be seated. As we celebrate our Christian faith, the invocation today will be led by the Honorable Bill Haslam, Governor of the State of Tennessee from 2011 until 2019. Following the invocation, the scripture reading will be presented by Dr. Adrian Battle, Director of Metro Nashville Public Schools. Dr. Battle will be reading Matthew 5:16 and Ephesians 5:8. And following the scripture reading, Lipscomb's Gospel Choir, under the direction of Aaron Howard, will present The Lord is My Light. Following the Gospel Choir, we present a video celebrating the history of Lipscomb University. Governor Haslam. Thanks, good morning. Please, please, pr please pray with me. Father God, as we gather here today, we are grateful. We are grateful for 131 years of history of this great university. We're grateful for all of the leaders, uh, folks like the Lowrys who have carried the baton to this point. We're grateful for a university that wants to be a light, not just in this neighborhood, in this community, in this city, but around the world. Now, Father, we pray for uh, this woman who you've called to lead this great university in this great city. We pray that you'd give her wisdom, that you'd give her patience, that you'd give her humility, and you'd give her strength. These are difficult times to lead, but we know that you have led this university uh, in times past and you will in times to come. We pray for your favor and your blessing upon Candace as she leads in a way that reflects glory to you and sheds your light to the world around. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. I will be reading two scriptures selected by President McQueen for this occasion, Matthew 5, 16 and Ephesians 5, 8. Matthew 5, 16, in the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Ephesians 5, 8, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light.
It's a great honor for Rhonda and for me to be here today and celebrate this inauguration, Dr. McQueen, the inauguration of the 18th president of Lipscomb University. And so Rhonda and I wish for you a great sense of wisdom as you carry out this formidable responsibility. We wish for you a sense of affirmation. There are thousands of people around wanting you to be successful. And we will pray that God will give you a sense of his presence and your family as well as you walk this very important journey. Congratulations and God bless you. I've learned as one of the recent bishops, archbishops of Canterbury said that when I pray, coincidences happen. And I think she will find that when she prays, coincidences happen because I know a lot of the people God uses and a lot of the things he uses, he uses them for. I was struck by the first McQueen I met when he threw all those three-pointers and I think we'll all be struck by the second one when we see those three-pointers. It meant enough to give up a lot of other things that would have been easier to do because this will be home till I die. There's something about the place you go that makes it special one way or the other. And this one I love. Candace, I could not be more proud of you. And I know that others are of the same feeling. We welcome you to this office. President McQueen, I believe that our God, just as he did centuries ago with Queen Esther, has raised you up for such a time as this. You know, there are countless people who bemoan the dark days that we seem to find ourselves in. And in many ways, they're right. We have days that are filled with darkness and evil and atrocities. I was delighted when I saw that the theme of your inauguration is be a light because that's really what Lipscomb is. For decades and decades, Lipscomb has sought to help every student, regardless of their age, grow the light of Jesus in their hearts, and then help them to maximize their God-given gifts to fulfill the good works that God prepared in advance for them to do, and in so doing, be beacons of hope. I know that being the leader of a city set on a hill like Lipscomb, it's not an easy thing. There are long days, countless challenges, and moments of discouragement. So the word of encouragement I would like to give to you today is found in Isaiah 41.10, when the Lord said through the prophet, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Congratulations on being named Lipscomb's 18th president. May your tenure be long, successful, personally fulfilling, and may it radiate with the light of Jesus. God bless. I am pleased to introduce Janet Ayers, president of the Ayers Foundation and benefactor of the Ayers Institute at Lipscomb University, who will bring a confirmation and an introduction of Dr. McQueen. Following Ms. Ayers, we will hear a series of greetings from various constituencies listed in your program. We are privileged to have special guests today to deliver these greetings, including the Honorable Bill Lee, Governor of the State of Tennessee, the Honorable John Cooper, Mayor of Nashville, Dr. Camilla Benbow, the Patricia Rhodes Hart Dean of Education and Human Development at the Peabody College, Vanderbilt University, and Dave Clayton, pastor of Ethos Church, who will respectively bring greetings from public officials, community leaders, the higher education community, and the faith community. Members of the Lipscomb family who will bring greetings include Dr. Mark Lanier, a member of our board of trustee, trustees, Patricia Wood, Lipscomb Academy mathematics teacher, and Dr. Prentice Ashford, dean of the university community life followed by Grant Hitchcock, University Student Government Association President. Ms. Ayers. Wow. 
What a great day. To the Board of Trustees of Lipscomb University, to Lipscomb University and Lipscomb Academy administration, faculty, staff, and students, to honored guests, to the McQueen family members, and to all in attendance today, I am pleased to offer confirmation for the historic appointment of Dr. Candace McQueen, the 18th president of Lipscomb University. And to introduce her to you, for many of you, I do not have to confirm or introduce Dr. McQueen to you. You know her, you respect her, and you love her. She has proven her deep dedication to Lipscomb University, to teaching and learning, and to service in the kingdom of God in ways that advance, have advanced Lipscomb, strengthened the education of students in Tennessee and beyond, and deepened the Christian faith of those around her. Candace McQueen is firmly grounded as an academic, but has also demonstrated an exceptional ability to lead with vision and exceptional effectiveness. The decision by Lipscomb's Board of Trustees to appoint Candace McQueen as president is a wise one, and our excitement at her appointment is right and well-deserved. I have known Candace McQueen as a senior administrator of Lipscomb, as a person who shares a passion with me for improving the education of young people, and as a dear, dear friend. Dr. McQueen is exceptional in every aspect of her life. As a person, she embraces a high expectation of herself and an energy in whatever she does, resulting in excellence. As a teacher, she offers her complete self to the classroom, knowledge, excitement, and belief in her students and their capacity to achieve. As a leader at Lipscomb, as the Commissioner of Education for the State of Tennessee, and as the Chief Executive Officer for the National Institute for Excellence in Teaching, Dr. McQueen has modeled dedication, integrity, and innovation, leading with vision and purpose. As a friend, she is caring, loyal, honest, and loving. But above all, Candace McQueen's faith is the aspect of her life that defines her life. Her walk with the Lord and her knowledge of his word shapes her perspectives, informs her decisions, her thoughts, and messages her heart. Dr. Candace McQueen is the right person to continue leading Lipscomb Academy and Lipscomb University forward. Her blood runs purple and gold. Her life reflects a long history with this institution that began with her parents. Her marriage to Annie was forged on this campus, and she has entrusted the education of her children, Abigail and Henry, to this place. In her early addresses to the Lipscomb community and to others since, Dr. McQueen has challenged us to bring our best, be a light, and be a fan of Lipscomb. No other person I know can aspire these goals with more integrity than Candace McQueen, and she will do so with determination grace, wisdom, and love. Dr. Candace McQueen brings her best in every calling. She is a light to all who know her and to the many, many people she will touch in her role as Lipscomb's president. Dr. McQueen, I wish for you a long, successful, and blessed tenure as president of Lipscomb University. Dr. McQueen, as governor, it is an incredible privilege that I have today to stand here before a tremendously remarkable group of distinguished guests and people who love this university in particular, and to honor you and to congratulate you. Most importantly, I thank you for following the call of God on your life not just to this position, but 
throughout your life. And that call has uniquely qualified you, he has, to serve in this very important role. Your commitment to and love for students in education from work in kindergarten through work in the public sector for the state all the way through to this role that you are taking and the highest level of higher education. Your passion for education is, has been unwavering. And your appreciation for and understanding of the role that faith plays, not only in this institution, but in society. Most importantly, the role that your relationship to him plays in your life those combination of giftings matched with the commitment to following the call has placed you in this spot at a remarkable university that has been a strong cord in the fabric of this community for generations, preparing young people in the highest of way to not only be successful in their life, not only to be a light, not only to change the world, but to impact the kingdom forever. You have been given a tremendous opportunity here, and we are all very proud of your taking it and of the role that you will play to uh, transform our world. Thank you, and congratulations. Dr. McQueen. On behalf of the Nashville community, I'm honored and pleased to congratulate you on becoming the president of Lipscomb University. Now, as mayor of Nashville, I know firsthand of the many contributions this institution has made and is making to our community. Through the years, Lipscomb has been a light of support, service, stability, and engagement to this neighborhood and to Nashville. Lipscomb University has been and is such an important source of service to Nashville through its students and faculty and employees. Now we have all the confidence that you as president will continue to contribute to the welfare and success of our citizens and will seek new ways to make Nashville a better place. Education changes lives for the better. And your stewardship of this institution will be a stewardship that changes lives and improves our community. I'm certain you will embrace this stewardship with responsibility, integrity, strength, and innovation. And I look forward to our work together in a city blessed with so many opportunities. And I know under your leadership, Lipscomb University and the whole Nashville community can accomplish many great things together. May God bless you in this work. Thank you. Dr. McQueen, this is a special day for Lipscomb University, and I'm honored to be part of it. On behalf of institutions of higher education, I extend our hearty congratulations as you begin your work as Lipscomb's 18th president. Lipscomb University's presence in higher education on the local, state, and national stages is strong and vibrant. As a leader who has long worked to strengthen education at every level, you know how to encourage academic curiosity. And you know how to create opportunities for your students and faculty to act on their curiosity in the quest for knowledge and discovery. The light of teaching and learning guides those engaged in scholarship, illuminates professional futures, and shines on the lives of those who benefit from higher education. 
I have every confidence that you will continue to move Lipscomb University to even higher levels of academic success and reputation. Leadership is a noble calling, and there is no better expression of leadership than to serve others in developing their distinctive talents. I offer our heartfelt wishes to you and Lipscomb University as you move into what I know will be a bright and successful future. Dr. McQueen, on behalf of the faith community, it is our joy and honor to celebrate you, and we just wanna say we love you, and we believe in you, and these people love you and believe in you, and we're not just for you, we're with you. We stand in this significant moment as you step into this role as the 18th president of Lipscomb University, and we know in any role of leadership, it's challenging. There are opportunities and there are obstacles, but I believe that Christian leadership has unique opportunities and obstacles but the gift of Christian leadership is you never do it alone. You don't just do it in community, but you do it in the love of the Father, in the grace of the Son, and in the empowerment and the friendship of the Holy Spirit. And I just think about the moment that we're in, and I cannot imagine a better leader in this moment, in this place, in this city, and in this time than Dr. McQueen. I believe that God has put you here for such a time as this. He has given you experiences and gifts and our prayer for you as a community is that the Spirit of God would fill you with wisdom, with gospel clarity, with creativity, with joy, with humility, with compassion and conviction, that you don't just stand back and wait for the world to make the first move, but that you call us higher and that you raise us up so that we can be the light of Christ in the world that he's called us to be. And so Dr. McQueen, we believe that God has put you here for this moment. And so we're praying for you, we love you, we honor you, we celebrate you. And today we congratulate you. Dr. McQueen, as you well know, David Lipscomb and James A. Harding had a dream to educate people in the context of their faith. Knowing that faith influences what people do and how they do it. For 131 years, Lipscomb University and Lipscomb Academy alumni are the fruit of this dream. Almost 40,000 alumni from this blessed institution have served and continue to serve in ways that improve the world at large while bringing glory and honor to God and his kingdom. The light of Lipscomb University shines everywhere from classrooms to courtrooms, in hospitals, in entertainment, in journalism, in business, in Sunday school classes, in hospitals, in pulpits, in mission fields, and of course, most importantly, in homes around this world. The light of Lipscomb shines in hearts of kindness and care in words of encouragement and comfort through pandemics, in times of joy, and in sadness. Now, Dr. McQueen, here is a special message from a special alumnus. Hey, what's going on, Dr. Kansas McQueen? This is Thomas Rett here. Uh, just wanted to say a huge congratulations to you for becoming the new president of Lipscomb University, um, my alma mater. Um, I, uh, some of the best years of my life were spent at Lipscomb. Um, I feel like I got to really know um, the Lord. I made friends that I still am in contact with today. Um, and just being able to go to a school that I literally could talk to anyone about anything. Thank you for representing Lipscomb University so well. Um, hopefully I get to meet you in person one of these days. Uh, but until then, keep being a light. As Lipscomb alumni, we are 40,000 beacons of light and today we especially honor Dr. Candace McQueen, who is one of us, one of our beacons among us. 
as were her parents, as are her husband and her children. Dr. McQueen, just as your roots run deeply in this place, we know that your heart beats strongly for its heritage and your mind rests squarely in a desire for its well-being. We know you love Lipscomb, and I am honored on behalf of my fellow alumni, including in a sense you, to congratulate you. So you're congratulating yourself through me on becoming Lipscomb's 18th president. We pledge to you our support. We pledge to you our prayers. And as you receive the presidential medallion today, know that 40,000 alumni stand behind you, cheering you on. May God bless you and your leadership, and may he get all the glory. Amen. Dr. McQueen, as a faculty member of this institution for 44 years, and someone who has worked with you as a colleague at Lipscomb Academy, I am very honored and pleased to bring you the greetings, congratulations, and well wishes on behalf of the Academy and the University faculty as you become the 18th president of Lipscomb. The 400 plus full-time faculty members welcome you to this position with excitement and support. Your distinguished career as an educator and leader bring a depth of understanding to you of the purpose of heart and mind and must exist in a work of a teacher, professor, and leader. As faculty, we seek to bring a light of knowledge and understanding to our students. We are confident in the kindred spirit that we share with you as scholars, researchers, learners who seek the light of discovery and we find a companion in you. As Christians who seek to instill those we serve the light in strong character, the depth of faith, the discerning intellect, and we find a colleague in you. We want our work with you to create opportunities for us to respond to profound curiosities from our students and in ourselves with the efforts to seek truth and answers to worthy questions. Dr. McQueen, here are a few of my colleagues bringing you their best wishes. Congratulations, Dr. McQueen. Dr. McQueen, I'm so excited you're here. Glad you're back. Congratulations, Candace. We're excited you're here. Welcome back to Lipscomb. Congratulations, Dr. McQueen. You're going to do great. We're so glad that you're here. You rock. Right. Ka-chow. Congratulations, President McQueen. Felicidades, Dr. McQueen. Congratulations, Dr. McQueen. Congratulations, President McQueen. We're so glad you're here. President McQueen, as faculty, we are anxious to work with you in moving Lipscomb University to a greater place of academia and service to the kingdom. We look forward to joining you in this calling. May God bless our work together in this place. Congratulations. President McQueen, the staff of Lipscomb University and Lipscomb Academy acknowledge your call for us to be a light to those around us, and we accept that call as we work daily to support students, faculty, and administrators. On behalf of the almost 700 staff members at Lipscomb, I offer our best wishes for your success as Lipscomb's president. We join as one to work alongside of you in every way we can to advance the mission and purpose of this institution. We see in you a heart of service and an understanding of the importance of listening and nurturing the goals of our work every day. We see in you an awareness that life within the classroom is enhanced and strengthened 
by moments outside of the classroom. And we encourage you to create beneficial extracurricular opportunities for our students to be a light on campus and beyond. We see in you the desire for student success academically, professionally, personally, and most importantly, spiritually. And we see in you a love and compassion for people. We look forward to our role in advancing your vision and plans as we strive to make Lipscomb University a caring, supportive, engaging, and beautiful place where students can learn, grow, and live. Congratulations, and may God bless you and your family. Dr. McQueen, as president of the University Student Government Association, and on behalf of the students at both Lipscomb Academy and Lipscomb University, please accept my congratulations on your appointment as Lipscomb's 18th president. We are pleased to welcome you back to a place that you share with us as a college home, as someone who walked this campus and grew to love in your own way. As students, we are privileged to be in a place where our faith is welcome, our dreams are valued, and our lives are guided by caring and dedicated people. We are part of a long history of students who have depended on and have been blessed with leaders who are courageous in embracing the mission of Lipscomb University and who have sacrificed to guide its students, lighting the path for them to succeed. We look now to you to continue holding that guiding light, and we do so believing in you and in your vision for Lipscomb. Your active faith and Christ-like character are evident. We are confident that you understand our needs as students because you are a parent, have been a professor, and have held several leadership positions at Lipscomb. We are certain that you will be a leader who will challenge us to reach our fullest potential, push us to accomplish our goals, and encourage us to enhance the expectations we have of ourselves. You have already shown us your interest in us by engaging with us and by your presence among us. Here are a few students who want to bring, your, bring you their greetings today. Congrats, President McQueen! Long live McQueen! We love you, President McQueen! Wait, we have a president? I thought the president was Biden! <laughs> we love you! We love you! President Candace McQueen! We are so excited for what's to come! You're the best, Dr. McQueen! You're the woman for the job! Dr. McQueen, we look forward to learning much from you. Thank you for your willingness to offer your leadership for us and for other students who will follow during your tenure. We will pray for God's blessings and peace to be on you. Congratulations and go Bisons. President McQueen began her Lipscomb career at Lipscomb Academy, teaching in the middle school. So, it is appropriate that the middle school should be included in this occasion. I am pleased to introduce you, Maya Prado, a Lipscomb Academy seventh grade student whose essay about being a light was selected to be presented today. Maya is the daughter of Heido and Susan Prado. Maya? Thousands of candles can be lightened from a single candle, and the life of the candle will not be shortened. Happiness never decreases by being shared. The goal at Lipscomb is for the school to be a light to the community. People can be a light to others by providing comfort, clarity, safety, and hope. Lights can also be a guide, helping people stay focused and see their surroundings more clearly, making good decisions, and staying on the path that leads to life. In John 8, verse 12, Jesus, the Messiah, was called the light of the world. In Mark 16, verse 15, Jesus calls his followers to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. 
Lipscomb's goal of sharing the light God has gifted us is exactly what Jesus wants us to do. Everyone needs to spread their light. The focus of the Bible is Jesus, the light of the world. This was symbolized at his birth with the star in the east that pointed the way to the stable. Throughout the Bible, Jesus devoted his life to spreading his light by doing his father's business and work to show others the way of the kingdom of God. In John 12, verse 46, Jesus says, I have come to you as a light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. Jesus, Jesus was giving others the opportunity to trust in him and be forgiven for their sin so that they would not spend eternity in darkness. Jesus shared his light with everyone by spreading the word of God. He also healed the sick and crippled people and he delivered those who were possessed, which helped people see God's power as a light. He was also a teacher and he would help people understand the kingdom of God. Jesus provided comfort and helped people through the darkness in many ways. Since everyone was made in God's image, we all have the light that Jesus has. In Matthew 5, verse 16, Jesus calls his people to let your light shine before others. God invites his children to share his light, whether it be posting a motivational, cheerful message on social media or performing a song. Optimistic people are great examples for others, being a supportive and comforting friend. Many inspirational figures such as Martin Luther King Jr. and Mother Teresa have been inspirational through their words and actions. We can be a light by showing God's love to others. Lipscomb's goal is to be a bright light that shines throughout the students, faculty, staff, and even to the outside community. By setting an amazing Christ-like example as a school, others will be inspired to know Jesus and want to have their light shine. Having a warm, welcoming environment and kind-hearted spirit helps visitors and new students feel safe and connected. Students will seek the safe haven of peace, friendship, and enjoyment that our school community provides. Lipscomb's Christ-like mindset and outlook on education work toward the goal of spreading God's light. In conclusion, the Holy Trinity is the real true light and everyone's light comes from them. A light is not just a physical thing. It can be a person or group of people who are spreading their light, helping guide others. These people have the ability to smile even when it seems like darkness is the only thing in sight because they know that because of God, no matter how difficult the circumstances, there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce David Solomon, my friend and chair of the Lipscomb Board of Trustees, who will conduct the investiture of Dr. McQueen as Lipscomb's 18th president, Chairman Solomon. What a wonderful day. The life of Lipscomb University is secured by the faith, dedication, passion, talent, and heart of people who have worked and sacrificed to bring us to this moment on this special day. We approach the investiture of Dr. Candace McQueen as Lipscomb's 18th president with confidence that she is the right person for this time in the history of this institution. As the chair of the Board of Trustees of Lipscomb University, and on behalf of the board, I affirm our support for her appointment. It is with great pleasure that I'm able to preside over this investiture at this time. This is an important and solemn occasion, and one that does not occur frequently in the life of a university. Dr. McQueen, will you please come forward? I would also like for you to have your family to come here. Andy McQueen, Abigail McQueen, and Henry McQueen. <clears throat> Dr. McQueen, today is a historic day for Lipscomb University 
as you take your place in the succession of leadership for this institution. I am confident of your love and passion for the mission of Lipscomb and of your desire to embrace and advance that mission as its president. I know you are prepared and ready to lead with integrity, strength, vision, compassion, and faithfulness. The Lipscomb Board of Trustees, administration, faculty, staff, students, and alumni stand waiting to work with you in this calling. I now present you with two symbols of the Lipscomb Presidency. First, the University Mace. It stands next to you as you as a public symbol of the authority given to you by the Board of Trustees. It is made from a tree that stood on this campus as part of the Lipscomb Farm. It represents the past, the present, and the future of Lipscomb University, and certainly the dreams that have and will shape the destiny. I charge you to respect that authority, guard it, and use it wisely. Second, the presidential medallion that I will place on your shoulders in just a moment is a more personal and symbol of the leadership you now assume. For it speaks of the confidence, trust, and affection bestowed upon you by the Lipscomb community. It is symbolic of the people that you lead and serve. It is a sacred reminder of the faith that guides your life and the intellect and heart that will guide your decisions. I charge you to wear it remembering this day in the stewardship now entrusted to you. Dr. Candace McQueen, it is now my pleasure as the chair of Lipscomb University to confer upon the presidency of Lipscomb University with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities associated with this office. this time, I would ask Dr. Mike Adams, a member of our Board of Trustees, who will lead us in prayer. Let us pray. <clears throat> oh, Holy Father, giver of life and light, source of all blessings and peace. We thank you for your care, for your guidance, for being a God who loves joy and happiness. We thank you for this wonderful, joyful moment in the history of Lipscomb University and for the opportunity we have to share it as a group with each other. Today, we lift up to you Dr. Candace McQueen as she begins her tenure as president of this great institution. Please breath her with wisdom that her efforts will produce results worthy of you and of your kingdom. Bless her with discernment that she might make decisions with clarity. 
Bless her with confidence that she might move forward with a sense of your presence. Bless her with a heart of reflection that she might recognize her own challenges. Bless her with a compassionate spirit that she might see the needs of those she leads. And bless her with an increased awareness of her daily walk in your presence, that she may seek your guidance through the truth of your word and through the privilege of praying to you. Please be with President McQueen's family as they support her and help her to manage the balance of her leadership here and the need for her presence with them. Give them attitudes of commitment, understanding, and love as they continue to grow as a family in your service. And finally, Father, please be with the Lipscomb University family as we move into the future together. Help us to seek the welfare of each other, to work decidedly and diligently for the mission of this institution and for your kingdom and to live in ways that bring honor and glory to you and your son, in whose name we pray, amen. Well, how's everyone doing? Well, I want to say uh, first thank you to Chairman Solomon for that very, very kind introduction and for uh, the faith that the entire Board of Trustees has put in me. I um, am eternally grateful. I also want to say thank you, Mike, for that special prayer on my behalf and certainly to everyone who has gathered here. Just a few weeks ago, I was standing on the sidewalk and one of our students came up to me and said, so tell me what is an installation? paused a while and said, well, I guess I would compare it a little bit to the inauguration of a U.S. president. That sounded pretty confident, didn't it, when I said that. And uh, she said, well, that doesn't seem quite right because you've already been here over six months. That was right. So I regrouped and said, okay, it's probably more like the festivities of a convocation. She paused and didn't buy that either. She said, well, that happens at the beginning of a school year and we're almost to the end of a school year. So I was struggling with what my next analogy might be. So I said, honestly, you know, it's probably a lot like a kindergarten graduation. <laughs> You're not really sure while all of you are gathering, but you get dressed up, you show up, and you say, good job, even though it may be the easiest year of the next 12. <laughs> and then my favorite part of kindergarten graduation, afterward, you all go get cupcakes. So we will have a special meal afterwards. But let me say, honestly, I appreciate all of you dressing up, showing up, and I'm very appreciative of how many well wishes and good jobs that you've sent my way. Um, it has truly been an amazing six-ish months and I appreciate that we're here now to celebrate my six month uh, graduation. I also wanna thank my husband for his love and support for the past 25 years. It's hard to believe it's been that long. And to my son and daughter, we, this is a fun picture uh, for the joy that the entire family and truly the two of them bring to my life every day. I wanna say thank you in particular to the leadership, the faculty and staff of Lipscomb Academy and Lipscomb University I appreciate how quickly you joined me as a team and every single day you're working on behalf of our students. So thank you for that teamwork. And I'm just checking, are there any students in the arena today? A few. I have to say my biggest thank you to you. Uh, you've certainly kept me on my toes. You've kept me focused. And quite frankly, from the moment I arrived, you kept me guessing. So I will never forget, I had only been here potentially two days. I'm not even sure I officially started. And I got the phone call, well, the villages has flooded. Someone was hanging a picture and hit the sprinkler. And then it wasn't just a couple months later, we had a repeat in the high rise and I didn't even ask how that happened, but something <laughs> happened in high rise. 
I'll also never forget when I spoke to the student body and said, I'm really expecting everybody to bring your best. And I thought it was a fantastic talk. Afterward, one of you brought me aside and said, well, you were bringing your best, but your roommate was not. And I really needed to address that situation. So thank you for bringing your best and for the roommates who are now working on bringing your best. But I do want to say thank you, truly, for the way we have gotten to cherish and to work these last six months. From the time you cherished, uh, you challenged me to dodgeball. Oh, I think we have a picture here of Team McQueen. Um, I do want to note that this adult team from Lipscomb did make it to the Final Four. Um, I also want to say thank you for all the folks at Lipscomb Academy for how you have been a partner in so many ways uh, to our teams that have gone on to different championships. And I want to say I've enjoyed cheering our basketball teams and our football teams at Lipscomb Academy onto a variety of victories. I've also really enjoyed seeing our students excel in a variety of academic competitions. Being there and winning has been great, but just seeing you compete. Being a competitor these last few six months have been fantastic. I've also loved those late night pancakes in the dorms or late night grilled cheese or late night wings, all the different things we've eaten at 1030 or later. Um, and I've also loved all of our many sidewalk conversations and the many, many times we've had serious conversations or we've had funny conversations, I've enjoyed them all. So thank you, thank you students from the bottom of my heart. As I considered what I wanted to share today, I knew I had to start here. From the many moments I walked the halls of Burton as an education major, or the times that I spent way too many hours in Collins practicing for Singarama, exactly, uh, to my time as a faculty member and the founding dean of the College of Education, or to my time today as parent of two freshmen. I've seen Lipscomb from many different vantage points. And I can say without hesitation that God has richly blessed our Lipscomb community. As Dr. Adrian Battle read earlier from Matthew 5, 16, I see a university that is letting its light shine before others so that they may see our actions and glorify our Father in heaven. Since I've been back, not a day goes by, and, and I'm not exaggerating, where somebody doesn't come up to me and say, this university transformed me. And I still feel like Lipscomb is really my home. That's very appropriate because for me, the last six months have felt like coming home. It's just like when you haven't seen a friend for a long time and you stop and you reminisce about all that was. And then you look around and you look at each other and you're in awe about all that has changed. That's what it's been like for me for the past six months. It's been like coming home. The last six months have also been a whirlwind. We've had multiple listening sessions. You've been involved with me in them. Now, we've talked to students at various times. We've surveyed faculty and staff. We've held focus groups. I've talked to alumni, and I've had an opportunity to engage intently with employers who hire our graduates. And I can tell you that the progress Lipscomb has made in the past several decades is truly remarkable. Our campus has had an enormous physical transformation in that time, and because of your hard work, more programs than ever are rated at the top, not at the back, in our state and across our nation. One thing is abundantly clear. We are now standing at a pivotal moment of extraordinary opportunity, and what we do next will be up to us. 130 years ago, two men shared a bold vision. It was a vision that included having a complete education, not a degree, and not just, I want you to come and learn about your faith, a complete education that combined those. Early presidents worked hard to set that foundation, and then modern presidents took it to the next level. Willard Collins, a beloved 14th president, will forever be known as the bridge builder. He successfully brought more and more people into the Lipscomb story. And then you heard earlier from my president when I was a student, Harold Hazlett. He strengthened Lipscomb's identity as a leading academic institution, bringing more and more accreditations to 
our faculty, staff, and programs, and also made sure we had master's degrees. And then there's Steve Flatt. He started the Raymond B. Jones School of Engineering, and he made campus enhancements all over our campus, but including Allen Arena, where you sit today. And these past 16 years have been marked by the leadership of Randy Lowry, who increased our enrollment by 94%. He opened the first Middle Tennessee College of Pharmacy, and he made sure we had doctoral degrees. And by the way, when I look around, he also helped us build one of the most beautiful campuses in our state. For 130 years, let's give them a hand. For 130 years, we've dreamed We've grown, but most importantly, we've led. We haven't been standing at the back. We've had leaders that knew what it meant to seize opportunities. I believe that's very appropriate for us than to have the bison as our mighty bas a mascot. The bison is the only animal that forges into the storm when the storm comes. He doesn't retreat to the back. He forges through it, and that's what we are doing at Lipscomb. Like the bison, many in our Lipscomb family have pushed forward. They've charted new paths, and they've become leaders, influencers, teachers, many, many without a title, but with an amazing purpose. Let's never forget some of our trailblazers. Ida Noble was our female faculty member. She was ahead of her time in elevating the arts in the 1890s. She fully embraced the founder's dream and she made sure we had a very strong liberal arts foundation. Then there was J. Ridley Stroop, a renowned researcher whose research in psychology is still considered today, even today, the gold standard in attentional studies. And we will forever recount wise words from Coach Don Meyer, a coach among coaches who took us to a national championship in basketball but maybe most importantly, taught us all how to be excellent. Lipscomb has also been blessed with amazing teachers, like Oliver Yates and Paul Langford, longtime fixtures in biology and chemistry. They helped make Lipscomb a leader in medical school acceptances that were well above the national average. Or Harvey Floyd, who inspired a love of scripture in generations of students. And then I know he's here today, there's Charles Frazier. Charles, for more than 40 years, was a quiet giant in accounting and education, educating countless accountants who have now not only influenced here in Middle Tennessee, but have influenced others around the world. Because of these teachers, these leaders, these servants, and might I add, the many, many more who are represented here in this arena today, current or retired faculty and staff. You, you, each of you, you are why we're here today. And you have to ask yourself, where is that? Where are we today? Well, we can boast almost 6,000 students, including our K-12 students, our almost perfect size undergraduate student body, and our graduate programs at the master's and the doctoral level. We also have a vibrant community of undergraduate programs that are top in their class. We have top programs in pre-med, business, education, engineering, nursing, and I would add we have stellar liberal arts and sciences programs. We're known for our agility and responding to needs quickly. That's seen in programs like our new physician assistant or our perfusion programs our programs in animation and gaming now in our College of Entertainment and the Arts. We've also elevated service, and today, I can tell you that Lipscomb every year puts more and more students out in the mission field during spring break. We just had spring break and we saw more than 200 faculty and staff participate in places across the world and use their time to range from providing basic medical and dental care in places like Guatemala to building homes in Honduras or teaching youth on the island of Saba. And already this year, I hope you didn't miss this moment, we had a record-breaking day of giving. 
we had a day that doubled, over doubled, the gifts that came in and the goal that we set. And we brought in $2.2 million with 5,000 donors. I wanna say thank you for those gifts. And thank you for how you continue to give to our university. I had to ask myself, why do people continue to give and support Lipscomb at such high levels? And I know it's because people care enough about this place that they make it a first priority and they put their money behind it. So all of that means, if you are just reflecting on it for a minute, that it is really a great time to be a bison. And I've been able to see that from going from Austin to Atlanta, from Huntsville to Memphis, from downtown Nashville to rural Tennessee, from speaking to donors and employers, to parents and many prospective bisons. Every person I've met has told me how much this place has influenced them. Even people who never went to school here say Lipscomb is a shining light in our community and literally around the state and around the world. The Lipscomb legacy is alive. It's alive and it's well. And ultimately, it doesn't reside here on this campus. It lives in every single person who's been touched by someone trained from here. A doctor, a nurse, a minister, a teacher. These are folks who are touching the lives of others every day. And it's because they found their purpose when they were here at Lipscomb. We should never, never lose sight of this even on the hard days. You've heard a lot from these folks, I almost quit when they said all these challenges were coming. But challenges are here, that's reality. But we should never lose sight of who we are and who we've been for over 130 years. You have to wonder if David Lipscomb could have imagined where we are today. As Mark Lanier mentioned earlier, over 40,000 alumni Countless people have been influenced by them. And I think David Lipscomb would be proud of what we've become. Now, the past will influence how we go forward. It has to. But ultimately, the past does not dictate the next step you make. That's our vision and our next step to make. We will work together now to build this vision. And I'm looking forward to working with all of you to take that next step. Whatever we decide to do though, I am committed and I know that Lipscomb will be a light. So you have to ask yourself, what does that really mean in today's world? How will Lipscomb be a light? Well first, Lipscomb will be a light in the darkness. Just a few weeks ago, I was on a flight to Austin. It was one of our Be A Light tours. And I had that maddening moment, y'all have all had it, you got on the plane and there were two individuals who had never met each other before and they were sitting right behind me and I knew for a fact that they would be talking for the next two hours. They did not disappoint. The conversation started, unfortunately, with the many, many poor choices these two people had made while they were in Nashville. A lot of downtown stories were in there. Most of the behavior they talked about were mistakes by their own words. Eventually it got serious and they circled around to the many relationship failures they had had. And at some point they got to how unfulfilled they were. Both of them were at work. As I was trying to muffle what I was hearing, I started pulling out my AirPods. And as I did, I looked over and there was a gentleman sitting beside me who had been reading his Bible from the moment we took off from Nashville. And as I glanced his way, I saw him pull out a card. And the card simply said, and it was a list of things, he said, how to share God's message with others. In that moment, I had a realization that I was witnessing and I was in real life. My mind flooded with all the questions that I have had on many, many occasions. Questions like, how do we engage people right where they are? How do we move from judging to healing? 
How do we share truth with others while always being complete learners ourselves? And maybe the question that has stuck with me is in any moment, at any time, anywhere, how can I be a light? For me, one of the most hopeful verses in scripture is John 1, 5. The light shines in darkness, but the darkness cannot overcome it. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Every day, we see the darkness creep in. You felt it. Anxiety, doubt, hatred, pride, fear, selfishness, and all types of temptations. But we know it's inherent in us. We know there is a better way. There is a path of light. It's a path that's filled with truth, hope, service, courage, compassion, and the greatest of these is love. That's a truth. That's a truth that all of us can build our lives on. Several years ago, I heard former Nashville mayor and Tennessee governor Phil Bredesen on an education panel. He was asked the question, what makes a great teacher? He paused for a moment he said, I'm going to answer this the way I would have answered it in healthcare when I was asked what makes a great nurse or what makes a great doctor. He said, I want a nurse or a doctor or a teacher that when the door of the hospital room closes or the door of the classroom closes, that she leads from her values. She leads from her character. She doesn't just rely on what she learned in a textbook. This is our mission at Lipscomb. This is how we find the light. We are the place where character and values meets excellence. It's not one or the other. This is what our students need now more than ever, and Lipscomb will be this kind of light to our community. Being a light on a college campus also means we've got to make sure our students are dreaming big dreams. It's been said that happy are those who dream big dreams and then make them come true. David Lavelle, an orthopedic surgeon in Memphis and one of our recent Shining Light recipients, knew exactly what he wanted to be when he was in the first grade. He wanted to be a doctor and help people. He even drew this great picture you're going to see. But what about the folks who don't know what they want to be? not since first grade and not when they walk in the door of college. Well, we want to develop something here at Lipscomb that will be a national model. We're developing the first of its kind Center for Vocational Discovery and Life Purpose. And that's because the very first question a student should not ever be asked when they come onto a, question, uh, a campus is, what's your major? But that's what we ask, what's your major? The very first question we should be asking students is, what is your purpose? What do you want to become? And this center is going to recenter how we think about what we do. We will help all students discover their why, be trained in their how, and then we will send them into the world with their what upon graduation. Each student will leave Lipscomb having fully explored their purpose within God's larger purpose for their lives. Finally, being a light in the darkness means making sure we are a light right here in Nashville. This means serving our neighbors well, caring for those who've experienced tragedy. This means using our expertise, resources, time, and talents to solve big city problems. We have answers and we have experts here. We need to work on big city problems, big state problems. It also means we need to stand up for those who need a voice. This is actually what Lipscomb has always been about. I don't know if you know this inspiring story about David Lipscomb, but it's from the 1870s when there was a cholera epidemic right here in Nashville. While most people who could fled the city in droves because one in every 25 people were dying of cholera at that time, David Lipscomb said, I'm going to stay here. And I'm going to stay and take care of the needy and the poor. Daily, he would take his buggy 
and he would go into the city and he would pick up the women of the Roman Catholic Sisters of Mercy and the Dominican order and they would go into the city and care for the sick, poor, and needy. Later, after the epidemic, he wrote about his outrage of all the people who left and did not care for the needy in his own, his own community. I've often found it very interesting that just a few years later, he took that outrage and he directed it, and he started the university where we sit today. Lipscomb has always, from its beginning, been about being a light, a light that drives out darkness. Second, being a light here at Lipscomb means that we want to be a light to more students. We're going to seek to ensure that all students, all students who want a Christian higher education degree can come to Lipscomb. We don't want the financial barrier that we know can be a problem. I wanted to introduce to you some of our students who are right here in this audience who have benefited from the access we've provided. Natalia spent the last few years of high school caring for a chronically ill family member. This sparked a passion for her to go to medical school, and she wanted to get on that path and start at Lipscomb. She knew that it wouldn't be possible for her financially to do so. But today, Natalia is a freshman from Houston, and she is on a path to go to medical school. And it was because of incredible scholarships and generosity from people who are in this room who made her vision a reality. And then there's Brady. Gotten to know Brady well. Brady is a freshman from Murfreesboro. He's a first-generation college student. Brady first learned about Lipscomb when we, he went on multiple mission trips when he was in high school, and he went with folks who were here at Lipscomb. He said the experiences showed him what a true Christian community could be like. And he wanted to come here because he had had those experiences. Our scholarships, our financial opportunities made that a reality for him. Christine is a veteran of the U.S. Army. She discovered Lipscomb when she wanted to follow her passion, one that started when she was a junior in high school. She always knew she wanted to be a pharmacist. When she began applying to pharmacy schools, she knew Lipscomb's pharmacy school was the best. And she decided to apply here. Now she's here, and she's balancing the responsibilities of being a mother of four and now a new college student. Christine said she was very, very nervous about transitioning back to civilian life and to college, but she found at Lipscomb a place and environment that welcomes veterans, helps veterans financially, and offers holistic help, and we're a place that she said shares the values that she learned while in the Army. And then there's Alexis. Alexis is a beautiful person, a theology and ministry major from Bristol, Virginia, who discovered she wanted to attend Lipscomb after attending one of our Dove Awards. She came back for a college visit, and the rest is history. Uh, we helped her come here, and now she says she's at a place that's helping her grow in her faith, in her major and certainly as a full person. Finally, being a light also means that Lipscomb will be a light leading the way. So my family is a family of runners. Um, let, let me say it this way. Truthfully, three of them are one, runners, and one of us is probably a jogger based on speed. This comes out clearly when we're all running together, which is rare. But when we're all out running together, they always get way in front of me and I proudly bring up the back. On a recent vacation, we ran almost every day. On these runs, I could always see where they were in front of me as far as it was. I could always see the finish line and that was a motivation to me. I would speed up, I could see that vision and I wanted to get there. But on our last day, there was immense fog on the beach, so bad that I could not see anything in front of me. I couldn't see where they were in front of me, and I absolutely could not see the finish line. My vision was completely obscured. My target, my path, they were all unclear. As a result, you can imagine my performance was the worst of the week. This has many, many parallels for us. Having clear vision, clear goals, 
knowing where you are and where you want to be matters in getting there. That's what our new strategic plan, Lipscomb Impact 360, is all about. It's about where are we, where do we want to go, and what do we need to do to get there. Our vision is fully in keeping with our founder's goal, that we want to stand in the front ranks, not at the back, in the front ranks of the great educational institutions of the world. Our plan is to stand in front and lead. And we'll do that as we accelerate on our path to be a top tier, nationally recognized university. To say it pretty plainly, and maybe a different way, I want Lipscomb University to be the best university in the country. I want you to be proud of your education. And when someone stops you and says, where did you go to college? You smile and you say with the new term I phrased, prideful humility, I went to Lipscomb University. We will lead in the liberal arts and sciences. We will lead in business and education. We will lead in allied health and engineering. We will lead in ministry, in archeology, span and in biblical scholarship. We will lead in athletics and the arts, and we will lead in missions and service. And we will also lead in the student experience. We wanna elevate student voice and key decisions. We wanna add new campus activities and new events that are fully aligned with what our students need. And students in the short run, it even means we're gonna add some new food choices mm -hmm, to, as options. And in the long run, we wanna work on a redesigned student activity center. We're also going, I knew you would like that one. We'll talk more about that one soon. We're also going to have a little fun together and university students, for you, that begins tomorrow. A beautiful day was a tradition from the early days of Lipscomb. It was an impromptu event when administration would surprise the students with a day off of classes and provide them with a picnic lunch down at Percy Warner Park. You know, I thought about that and thought, that does seem pretty cool. But it was a tradition from over 60 years ago, so I wasn't sure people would want to do that. But university students, tomorrow will be your beautiful day. Cause it's a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Beautiful day. Oh baby, any day that you're gone away. It's a beautiful day. I absolutely love your reaction and the faculty are all like, what? What? Yeah, that light was just for me to see your faces. Um, <laughs> but tomorrow, your day will be a full day. We're gonna have brunch, we're gonna have service activities for the citizens of Nashville and for the citizens of Ukraine. We're gonna have fair rides, a big lawn party. Uh-huh, and we're gonna have food trucks, of course, like 10 of them. And we're gonna end the day with a big concert. So I'm excited to say to you, thank you for what you've done the last six months, and we can't wait to celebrate a beautiful day with you. By the way, that's university students, not academy. So sorry. We'll work with your administration on something else. <laughs> let me end, let me end by saying today truly marks, it truly marks a pivotal moment. Any transition does. And I know that with this pivotal moment, we have an extraordinary opportunity and we're prepared to take it. As we've done in the past, let's summon the courage and let's have the vision to take our next bold step and join God's plan for what he's been doing at Lipscomb. Let's be a light. Let's be a light in the darkness. Let's be a light to more students. And let's be a light leading the way. Let's do this in our classes, at our jobs, in our dorms, with our families and with our friends. 
And let's never forget the words of Matthew 5. We are the light of the world. A university set on a hill that cannot be hidden. We do not light a candle and put it under a bowl. But instead, put it on a stand. And it gives light to everyone in our community. Our community. Our community. Our community. Let's let our light. Our light. Our light. Our light. Let's let our light shine before others. Lipscomb, let's now go be a light. Thank you. today to have Lipscomb Academy alumnus, Pat Boone, lead us in the singing of the alma mater. Mr. Boone, along with Lipscomb Academy classmate Don Henley, composed Lipscomb's alma mater, which was adopted in 1962. Pat Boone's successful combination of a distinguished career in entertainment and a faith, faithful Christ-centered life is a profound example of being a light in the world. We are grateful to have him with us today Mr. Boone will be accompanied by members of the university choir. The words to the alma mater are printed in your program. Will you please stand? The 
Let's all sing this song, okay? <laughs> Lips come, lips come, hail to thee. Hear our heartfelt praise. May thy truth and servanthood guide us all our days. Precious seeds of days gone by, give us strength to today. Please be seated. We close our ceremony today with moments of refle reflection and prayer. With the tolling of the bell and the benediction. The tolling of the bell is a Lipscomb tradition. The bell will toll one time for each decade of the institution's existence. Today, the bell will toll 13 times. As the bell tolls, we invite the Lipscomb community to reflect on the many ways Lipscomb University and Lipscomb Academy have been blessed by great leaders. Following the tolling of the bell, the benediction will be led by Dr. Leonard Allen, Dean of the College of Bible and Ministry at Lipscomb. We ask the audience to remain seated during the tolling of the bell, the benediction, and the recessional that will follow. Let's close in prayer. Eternal God, we come to you through our Lord Jesus Christ and in the power of your gracious spirit. You are holy and your name is great. We thank you for the Christian heritage of this university, for the long journey in faith that has brought us to this present moment. 
And we pray for your hand, your guidance to remain upon us through seasons of change and challenge, of opportunity and growth. In all our varied gifts and backgrounds, draw us together on a common mission. We acknowledge and give thanks for the authority that has been bestowed upon Dr. McQueen as president of this university, an authority that grants her a new capacity to lead and to make a difference and to bless and empower others, to prepare young people to embrace more fully Christ's call upon their lives. Thank you for this authority enabling her to be an even brighter light. We also acknowledge that this gift of authority exposes our president to a new level of risk and vulnerability. So we ask you today, O oh God, to guard and protect her. Guard her heart and mind through our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant her a fuller measure of wisdom and discernment. Grant her strength and good health. Fill her, we pray, with the joy and peace that come as fruit of your spirit. We desire, as your disciples, to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So we lift up our hearts to you to shape our affections. We open our souls for your presence to give us life. We commit our minds to seeking your light. And we dedicate our strength to serving you and others. We want to live more deeply into the story of Jesus. Teach us, O oh God, our true end, which is to praise you and enjoy you forever. In the name of Jesus, amen. What a blessing it is to be able to be here today. And before our recessional, I'm privileged to make one more announcement, and it involves recognition of President McQueen's inauguration by our state and also by our city. Both the state of Tennessee and the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County have approved that two very familiar icons in this city will be illuminated tonight in Lipscomb colors, honoring the inauguration of President McQueen. From dusk this evening until dawn tomorrow morning, the cupola located at the very top of the State Capitol Building in downtown Nashville will be bathed in purple. And the Korean War Veterans Memorial Bridge that crosses the Cumberland River in downtown Nashville will be purple and gold. And we are honored by and grateful for this recognition. Wanted you to be on the lookout for that, especially if you're downtown or want to look for an excuse to go downtown tonight and just uh, enjoy the purple and gold. As Mitch mentioned, we ask that the audience remain seated during the recessional. And we'll begin by asking the stage guest, board of trustees, Lipscomb leadership, our delegates who are here, and faculty to please stand for the recessional. <laughs> 